When Nolan Arenado played for the Rockies, remember they started that phrase, Nolan being Nolan, and it yeah. became kind of a Twitter sensation and a hashtag, and we now see why when we watch him in St. Louis. He's just elite. That's all. Yeah, I, I think, Lauren, we're a little biased towards Nolan. I know he's one of your favorite players. He's one, one of, my, of my He's definitely one of my favorite players. The way he plays the game, not even last night, a night before against Milwaukee, second and third, ground ball to him. Most guys, 90% of the league would have took the out at first. He throws an absolute seed to Yadier Molina at home plate. Bang, cuts down a run. So he does it in so many different ways. He went deep last night. He is one homer and four RBI shy of his seventh, seventh, 30-plus bomb, 100 RBI-plus season in the game. Okay? So it's not the uh, course Field effect. It's this guy being one of the best players in the game, and he does it a little bit differently. And kind of when you dive into the numbers with Eric Nays, kind of something jumped out at me. A lot of his homers, all of his homers, are dead pull. And when I watch him hit, let's go in. He doesn't strike me as a guy that is trying to pull every baseball. Corbin Burns right here last night, run that back for me. Corbin Burns executes this pitch down and away. Maybe Nolan takes his single the other way. We'll get into a couple uh, spray charts a little bit later. He misses middle. This ball's absolutely destroyed. 95, and here we go. Tie ball game. Adam Wainwright talked about it in the post game. He says, usually giving up one run with this lineup, I'm not losing the game. I have confidence in what I'm about. And listening to the telecast, he's a guy that has been ambushing some people a little bit more. He has 6 0 oh, oh, run that back. Look at Frankie Montas. This is a breaking ball. I mean, are you sitting breaking ball in this spot? Maybe he is. Six 0 homers, ambush homers. He's hitting 420 on first pitches. Charlie Morton's going to spin him a breaking ball. 0-0. 5-2 Atlanta. So maybe he takes his chances once in a while, knowing he's not going to get a heater. And then he gets out in front and wraps a Samson homer in Wrigley Field. So very interesting, but he does it a little bit differently. Pause this. I want you to focus, because most people, when they knock the donut off the bat, they talk about they not wanting to move their head, wanting to see the baseball, but they also talk about having a little bit of a rhythm in the box, all right? How are you going to attack rhythm? How are you going to search for being on time with the pitcher? I had a lot of hitting coaches. Franklin Ticket Stubbs used to talk to me all the time about, come up with a love song and play a love song in your, head, in your head and try and dance with the pitcher in your head. And that's what I feel like Nolan Arenado does in a box almost better than anyone. He is real fidgety and moving around, run this. I mean, look at his feet right there. Run that back for me again, I'm gonna take you through it. Cause something else he does very interesting to me because all his homers are pulled, but he doesn't present bat path wise that he's trying to pull every pitch. And I think another thing, when you watch Nolan Arenado, there's a dance step to it. And then when you get to the point of contact, a lot of guys, this is almost completely straight. There's not a lot of chicken wing. That's almost for guys who get beat. When I used to try and go to right field, you chicken wing and try and present the ball over there. He actually hits here with this a little bowed and he's really the only guy in the league that kind of keeps it bowed the whole way through. I think it just presents a little bit differently. Run this. So he gets to the point of contact. Watch his left arm. Boom. Watch it stay there after the point of contact. Keep going. So he presents himself a little bit differently. So he's able to get his knocks the other way. Pause this real quick. The only reason I bring this up we used to do a drill called the Happy Gilmore drill. Young kids should be doing this at home to try and create that rhythm into the baseball. Bang! Nolan and Max Muncy came up with it to get him going this year. It's almost the, the complete opposite. Almost a step back to feel like they're getting into their lower half. Run it. I mean, watch it. I mean, that's a lot of dancing, but it works for him. And Max Muncy, he was struggling. Look at that back foot step back. And now he engages that backside and he's been able to do I mean, he's one of the greatest players in the game. But this is super interesting. All his homers are pulled. And this is Corbin Burns. This is the closest to dead center field. Can we overlay the, the, the singles, Nays? 
Were we able to do that? And then check this out. He takes his knocks the other way. Huh. But he does all his damage. And then just to end this, bring up his ranks since 2015 and I'll throw it back. <sighs> wow. This is the one. He's available. He shows up. He wants in. I mean, Ali Marmal took him and Goldschmidt out of the game the other day, gave him a day off. He was probably chomping at the bit. But in homers, he's first since 2015. That graphic's unbelievable. Yeah. Right? And Goldschmidt, Nays is saying Goldschmidt is, is two on that list for games played. Yeah, not bad. St. Louis has got their eye on some big stuff. 